Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? This is Miss Ella. She's my co-host slash director of the channel and the resident pain in the butt when it comes to filming. If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor. And on this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you are bringing any plants indoors this year and what they may be. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering bringing plants inside, but not cuttings. I will be doing a separate one on that. And I also will be doing a separate one on seed saving and uh, bulb storage for the winter. But for right now, we are talking about those tropicals that we aren't cutting down, we aren't taking cuttings from, and that we just literally wanna bring the whole plant indoors and exactly how to do so. While you may think you literally just pick up the pot and bring it inside, that is a big no-no because you will end up with pests. So there are some steps that you may wanna to take to ensure that you don't end up with spider mites, mealybugs, thrips, you name it. And the reason why you can end up with these is actually because the eggs of those bugs usually reside in the soil. So the bugs will lay their eggs in your potting soil and then you'll bring it indoors. And then around November, you're gonna notice that you have a bug infestation and it's probably from your soil profile. So I'm gonna go and walk you through exactly how to prevent that. In this video, I did a philodendron salonium, salom, I don't know, different names, doesn't matter. Um, philodendron hope is also what it's called. It's also now referred to commonly as a split leaf philodendron, which I'd argue is incorrect, but whatever. And um, I bring him indoors every year. Now I typically cut him back, but I'm kind of falling in love with him as a plant this year. Um, I'm really enjoying his foliage. He seems to be getting really nice deep fenestrations and almost like a rippling effect on the leaf. And I'm just, I've changed my mind about them. So typically I, I chop them down, I store them like a bulb, but this year I actually wanna bring them in as an indoor plant. So that is what I've decided to do. And I, I do this for all my indoor, my outdoor indoor plants. Um, you'll notice if you put plants outdoors in the summer, you get some crazy growth. So if you're dealing with cuttings or plants that aren't you know huge yet, and you kinda of wanna give it that extra push, then uh, putting them in the great outdoors may be an option for you. So obviously follow the correct protocol of hardening them off and things like that. But I noticed pretty awesome results when uh, they're exposed to the fresh air and actual sunlight that's not filtered through a window. So when I bring these guys out, I usually put them in a bigger container. So the first step is actually finding a container that is smaller. And so in this case, I want to say that this pot that I use is eight inches. I'm not hundred percent for sure what the, the dimensions on it are, but it's around eight inches. It's pretty small. And I like to keep my house plants in small pots. I suggest you do so. Also, it actually really helps against uh, root rot. So from there, what I do is I will clean off the roots of the plant with a hose, and then I will actually spray down the foliage. You really wanna make sure you get in those creases on the plant, that is very important, um, just because eggs and bugs can hang out in there as well. You wanna do the backs of the leaves, the tops of the leaves, and the roots entirely. Again, you want to remove that outdoor soil. Once this is completely cleaned off, you can then place them in your pot with some fresh potting soil. And so after I'm done cleaning my roots, my leaves, the intersections of the leaves where the petioles meeting kind of that corm, the stalk of the plant, then you can repot it in some potting soil that is fresh and new. So nothing that's been outdoors, something that's fresh out of the bag. I completely encourage you and I actually support reusing potting soil because it is more sustainable. Peat moss and coconut choir aren't sustainable uh, enterprises. You can watch my video on that if you want, but I do encourage you to reuse it. But outdoor soil should stay outdoors and indoor soil should stay indoors. And in some cases, the indoor soil should just simply be put outdoors again. <laughs> So that makes any sense. Outdoor never comes in, indoor can go out, but it should never come back inside. So what you do is you put some new fresh potting soil on there. Once you're done that, you are going to want to take end all or just any sort of insecticidal soap. And you're going to want to spray the top of the soil, the plant stalks, and the again, the, the stalk areas where it attaches to the petiole the leaves underside and top and you're really going to want to make sure you get into any grooves 
then you can wipe those leaves off if you like or you can simply just let the, the insecticidal soap sit there and hang out. You are going to want to repeat this process once a week for about two weeks. So I do three applications. They say only to do two, but I do three just in case. The second last step is actually using diatomaceous earth. I heavily encourage this. I, after I'm watering and done watering and everything, I will actually put down diatomaceous earth on the surface of the pot. You can get food grade versions, you can get pet safe versions, and you can just get the stuff that I had, which I don't know if it's pet safe or not. And it works fantastic. What it will do is it'll essentially just cut all those insect eggs that are there and any insect eggs that are below the surface um, as they hatch and try to crawl out of the soil, it'll actually just uh, cut them up there and they will perish and cease to exist. So very, very cool. I like to use that DE. I actually keep it in like my soil bucket for both indoor and outdoor. It's kind of one of my tricks in my trade. So I do apply that and that's only one application that I apply and you're done. And then the last step, probably arguably the most important is do not put your plants anywhere near your other indoor plants that were never outdoors. You do need to quarantine your outdoor plants coming inside the same way you would quarantine a plant that was coming from a greenhouse or from a growers or from a cutting Facebook marketplace, whatever the case is, you do want to quarantine it. So put all your little outdoor specimens in a separate room or wherever you deem necessary and let them hang out there for about a month until you can monitor and figure out what happens. Like I said, I noticed the bug situation around October, November. So I like to think that the eggs are hatched and done by a month, month and a half. So that's probably when you can start taking them out of quarantine. But just to be safe, because even despite all those methods of protection, you sometimes still will have stuff that sneaks through and you, and you don't want to harm your rest of your plants. If it does sneak through, just simply use an endol application, insecticidal soap, whatever the case is, and just wipe the leaves off thoroughly. But I can do a separate video on that. So I hope this encouraged you to bring some of your outdoor plants in. I will be doing a cuttings version of this um, just because it is sometimes easier to do cuttings rather than taking the whole plant inside. Reason simply being is that you don't have to deal with the soil side of things and the root side of things. So sometimes it's advantageous just to do cuttings. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, especially for Ella. She appreciates it very, very much. Don't you, Ella? Yeah. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. I got a new tripod ring light thing and it's junk, to put it lightly. It literally just keeps on falling down. It, it can't support the weight of my phone. Maybe I just don't have the biometrics down pat yet but if you notice that the camera keeps on sinking that's why i apologize hopefully i can figure it out one day or i'll have to get something completely new